Okay, well, just going to change focus here a little bit. I've been working on the Corvette uh, interior, um, just working through getting um, interior um, components switched out, mainly through the dash. Um, so that's coming along, but as you can see, it's all pulled apart right now. And I'm just waiting for some parts to come in uh, before I can complete that job. So um, I'm wary of starting too many jobs in this car um, and not finishing them without having the parts here. Um, I don't have a great rush on this. And because it's not a, a car I'm not that familiar with, I'm just going to try and do you know one job at a time for the most part. And then uh, before I move on to the next one, just so I don't get a whole uh, array of jobs going that uh, I can't keep track of and start losing parts for. So I'm just going to put this one on the hold for a little bit, uh, for a week or so at least, until these parts come in. And what I do want to do is uh, switch focus to the Forenza here, which has been up on stands for a few months now, um, while I've been working out what to do with the, the front end uh, shocks and springs. And as you can see here, I've now got some springs and also some gas shocks that came in uh, just before Christmas. So I'm going to set about today um, putting those in and in the effort to get this car back on the ground um, mainly um, and the purpose of that is really just so it's um, on the ground but also I just want to be able to move it across a little bit just to get myself a little bit more space between the two cars here I can move this one over another foot at least uh, which helps you know when I'm trying to get into the Corvette here that door swings open and it's touching the Ferenza and I'm having to be very careful with that. Before I have an accident I am going to uh, just get back into this one, get it back on the ground, move over a little bit and um, maybe even take it for a run down the road and see how it feels with these new um, shocks and springs in it. Let's see if I can remember how it all goes back together. All right here we are again, got my dog mapped out so that's always a good start. Um, so, as mentioned, we've got new gas shock absorbers coming. I think I might have said spats on a previous video, so I apologise about that. They uh, are, in fact, gas adjustables out of the UK, so they look nice and shiny and look like they should do the job. So, that's what's going in, along with some refurbished springs that I've had in stock. Um, which will go back in. I have put new ball joints on both sides and painted up all the bits and pieces, cleaned them up and painted them black and uh, they're ready to go back in. In fact, they've been ready for a, quite a while now. So let's get these back in, see if I can remember how this all goes back together. We've got bolts and parts and stuff everywhere, so I know there's the top bolt, got the two lower brackets, what else, I've got all my swing arm bits and pieces here, that goes together, that one goes on top of that one, I believe, no, maybe not, no, it's better, yep, that goes on top of that one, Got the two bolts that go through there, so I've got those ones, that's a good start. And the rest, I have to remember. And I've got grease on hand here. No idea what that new nut's off. Anyway, we'll work it out as we go along here. Probably need to get a jack underneath this, so I can jack this up when the time comes to get it in the right place. That's what I need to do. I need a jack. All right, I've got you down to my level now. So, I've got my jack. So, I've got my spring. Got the top insulator. So, I can now put that in place. I believe. If I can remember how. This. I've done this so many times, I should know how to do it without too much drama. But because I'm on camera, of course, it's going to be drama. So I need to drop out that 
ball joint. No, of course I've got the I've got the uh, inner pivot point released. That's what I'm doing. So I just need to pull that out. There we go. Now I can slide the spring up through behind. place and then I can bring that up place somewhere there come on go get it in approximately the right place and I can jack it up from there that's the bolt that goes through the inner pivot point and the nut goes on the front side so I don't have to pull my rack out and drop that out of the way and put the nut on the front. So now I need to jack up that inner pivot point and just get that spring seated properly which it's not quite at the moment. Come on. There we go. Now I can start jacking that pivot point up, get that bolt through, and then I can work on the lower and getting the shock installed. Usually, this is not that painful of a process. Anyway, it just needs to come out of it. That's the problem. It's just getting jammed up a bit. That. Why are you being so difficult? You and I are friends, we've done this lots of times before. Okay, so I've got my spring in and I've got the bolt through the lower arm uh, inner pivot point. And so I'm ready to put in the shock absorber. And so I grab the old shock absorber and found my bolts for it and go to try it in here and it doesn't fit so I'm like that's a bit odd so it fits into the old one somewhere down the track in the last 50 years somebody's replaced the bolts in the lower shock mount and you can see they're a little bit shinier and newer and they're not the right bolt for the application that's got a heavier shoulder uh, beyond the thread so it doesn't actually fit through there so check the top ones top ones are fine you can tell it's the original old bolt um, they fit no problem and no problem in the bottom either so off down to the parts store I go and get me some new 7 16 bolts which have a nice long shoulder and they work for the bottom pivot point, the bottom shock point. So slight stall there but we're off again. And so I'll put a little bit of Grease on that. Notice I've used high tensile bolts as well because the cert guys seem to want cert, uh, high tensile bolts on everything. If you replace it from factory, it needs to be high tensile. So rather than have the argument later, just put them in. So now I should be able to take this. Right orientation. The adjustment knob for the shock. I'm just trying to work out which the best orientation for that is. I think. I think that's going to be too hidden away down there. I think it's going to, have to go to the inside. At least I can get that from up underneath. So 
they'll go there. Washers. That's the right orientation. Shock absorber with the adjustment knob to the inside. Like so. Another washer. And then also picked up lock nuts. Right, so that's there. I'll do that up a little bit more. Okay, that's that assembly. Place that top. Point. Now I can insert this lock up into the position, um, but I'm going to have to jack it up. So I'll just put a nut on at the moment just to stop this lock pulling off. Right, so that's loosely bolted up there and I can get to my adjustment knob good that's what I needed to do now this is a slight because it's blinding me every time I'm focusing on it okay so I've got my jack underneath the lower arm so now it's just a matter of jacking it up until um, the top pivot point lines up with the arm. There we go. Should be about it there. And then I've just got the sway bar to install, which is miles off from where it should be for some reason. So I uh, keep on jacking it, see if that gets it closer to where it needs to be. Got to get these two bolts down through the top of the sway bar, through the lower arm. Nuts on the bottom. Sounds easy. A little bit of persuasion. Now I'm going to put a little bit of weight back on this. See if I can get those bolts through. We've just started. One, there it goes, put the knock nuts on underneath, right, is that one, I'll oh, get back, go back through these and check them again, yep. And now it's just a case of mount up the sway bar. So I can drop this down now and get it out of the way. And uh, I'll get you down here for a looky loo. So here we go. Here's the Spring in place, and the shock, bolted through the bottom, the ball joint there, and that's all good to go. Okay, I've just got to tie in the uh, sway bar 
now to that lower arm and uh, in pretty good shape and this here I wonder if I can show you now yeah, there's the adjustment knob right there so that's nice and accessible so that's all looking pretty nice I'll um, put that sway bar link on now and then I can get to the other side all right so that's that job done I've got uh, shocks and springs in on both sides here now of course it fought me the whole way and uh, I could have videoed the uh, whole job but I would have been bleeping every five minutes so maybe I'm just getting old and grumpy but they're in there now and uh, looking good I can now put the wheels on and put it down on the ground all right see if I can do that without cursing and swearing too much uh, but before I put it down on the ground, I need to adjust the shocks to a start point, I guess. And at the moment they're on zero, so I'm going to set them at five. I believe there's a total of 15, I think, uh, adjustments on the shocks. So zero being the softest and 15 being the hardest. So I'm going to start them out at five and then I'll um, do some test driving and see how I like it. I can adjust it from there. All right, let's get this thing down to the ground. It's going to be a bit of a process because I've got it up so high now to, I can't just lower it down straight down or the jack will get um, pinched by this front, front spoiler. So I'm going to drop the back down to the bottom level, bottom notch on the stand and then do the front and go back and forth a bit here. I'm going to put blocks of wood underneath the back wheels as well when I put it down and then do each side separately put it so low to the ground. I'm put the front down now, hopefully. Now I can just roll it back off those timber blocks. Oops, sorry. Still see? Uh, yep, you're good. Back on the ground. How's that feel? Pretty darn good. I ended up changing my mind on the level of the um, shock level and put it up to seven, which is about half, which is what they recommend you start with. So we'll start there, see how it feels on the road. And we can adjust it from there. I might see if this thing will fire up. Do a bit of a run and clear out. I'm not going to go for a drive today. It's raining and uh, I'm just not prepared for it. But I might just roll it back and forth and get the, the backside over that way a little bit. Alright, so I wonder if the battery's got any juice in it. Thank you. 
pill pretty quick. Put the power on. There goes the pickle pump. That's a good sign. We'll see if it starts. charge for a bit and um, try again. Alright, so I've found another battery that I've uh, got in the boot there, jumped on to give this in a few extra volts, so got some engine start, we'll see if we can get this thing to fire over. Another new day here. I'm going to take the Forenza out for a bit of a beat down the road and clear the cobwebs out, get some fluids moving around it. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to give the uh, the old girl a, a wash. She's been parked up in here for the last, I guess, best part of a year, and she's just got a layer of grime over top of her. So, probably not too bad on camera, but up close, she's just uh, she's dirty. Get her outside, wash her off. And then um, we'll go for a drive, put some air in the tyres, and um, see how she runs. I wonder if she'll start today without the spare battery hooked up. She needs a good run, which is the purpose of this little exercise, so we'll get that battery, battery hooked up and see how we go. So we'll try it without any start fluid. Oh, love the smell of that stuff. I may have flooded it. I've got another battery here. I'll we'll try that one. That battery's not good enough. Okay, so. Change your plans. I'll push the car outside and wash it, and while I'm washing it, I'll put the battery on charge and try to start it again after that. It's not the first time I've pushed this car, but I suspect I may have to pull the plugs out and dry them off.
So yeah, nice overcast day today to be washing off. It's always uh, better than blue in the sun. Okay, well I figure I've got a little bit of time to kill here while the battery charges. So I might as well pull these bugs out and check them. See how they look. I suspect they're gonna be wet. And yep, definitely wet. Do a bit of a card clean. So I just flooded it when I was trying to start it before. At least these park plugs are easy to get to in this engine. As opposed to the locks or slant fours, it's a bit trickier. These are uh, pretty much just right on top here, so not too much drama to do this. Right, so I think I might just try to fire it up again now because I think that's going to make all the difference. Okay, what's going on here? Okay, there's obviously something else going on. Maybe I've got some water in somewhere when I was washing it. Seems unlikely, but I'll check. I'll check my electrics over there next. Simple. Oh, I come off the uh, oil there. So. Can you see the difference? Alright, well, here we go. First drive gain in quite some months, so we'll see how this goes.
five pounds, so that should change the way things feel a little bit. steering wheel's back, I thought I'd fix that. <laughs> okay, get off. come on, stop moaning. Okay, and here we sit. So it's that little drive. And that drive didn't quite go as smoothly as I would have liked. However, it was a good little shakedown test. Got uh, the fluids moving around again in it. And those shocks and springs feel good. Probably a little bit firmer than I'd like around town, so I'll probably soften those up. Um, just planning my next steps with it. Um, there's a number of little jobs I need to do, which I need to stay focused on. And with that sort of focus, uh, well, there's going to be huge progress made, obviously. Anywho, thanks for watching. It's always fun getting this car out for a drive. I hope you enjoy it too. Stay tuned. There will be more content coming up, up on this soon. Keep an eye out for it. And uh, anytime I get anything done on it, I'll be showing you progress. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye now.